Hey, Grant Waldridge here again for another little snippet walkthrough of a boat that we've built. This is a very big Super Sport Offshore Pilot House, kind of custom. Um, it's a 32 foot long boat by 9, and a, nine foot 11 beam. Um, so that is much bigger dimensions than obviously our 29 by length and it's wider by 5 inches. Um, it's also taller. Basically the guy says, I love your 29 and everything about it. I just want it wider, longer and taller. So. That's what we have here. Um, he's got his custom name on there, Bloodsport. We like it. Uh, so anyways, Woldridge, 32-footer, almost 10-foot wide, 9-foot 11 to be exact, Super Sport Offshore, pilot house. What is unique about it? Well, besides its dimensions, the cabin's much longer than our 29. There's a lot of space inside, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, it's on the biggest trailer Easy Loader makes. It's a triple axle, galvanized trailer. It's the 15,500 15, capacity trailer disc brakes on all the axles. So a very nice heavy duty trailer. This whole package over the scale, we weighed it just the other day, pretty much just like it sits. It had some fuel in it, a gear bag, everything, motors and all. We were 13,700 and some odd pounds. So pretty good for this size of boat. So he's got uh, his own anchor system. He uh, supplied for the front. That's a good winch is what it's called, actually called good. Um, it's got a sea hook style galvanized anchor in the front, big bow rails. He's got the big boulder going hatch up in the front of the cuddy. So if we're walking out, dealing with the anchor, good access to the bow. You can't get any better. Really cool radar setup over there, up there. It's a radar arch with stanchions off to the side. VHF antenna, as you can see. A couple LED remote controlled go lights. You can pull those from the inside of the boat. Garmin high definition radar, GPS all that set up up on the roof so pretty cool all blacked out that's the colors he likes so he picked the color and there we go cool little welded ladder on the back of the cabin there to kind of help yourself get up onto the roof he raised the roof rails a little bit wrapped them around the front got some rocket launchers rod holders on the side downrigger brackets nice big winch that's an electrodyne winch for pulling up uh, crab pots shrimp pots all the above so we'll go take a look at the back and, and what you see inside all right, here we are at the back of the boat. You can see our power, two big Yamaha F250s, 30-inch shaft, all hydraulic steering, a couple of saltwater series two, stainless steel, three-blade propellers. Got the Yamaha 99 high thrust, remote controls up at the rear helm, tied together with steering tie bars. We got a Garmin TR1 autopilot for the kicker. There's a GHP 20 autopilot for the main engines. You can see a nice transom door, railings that the customer picked out. You can see our trim tabs here. Nice Electrodyne pot puller. He's got a couple transducers down there. There's a GCV10 um, sonar unit in the boat with the Garmin. That gives a side scan. He's also got the GSD26 sonar module with a Airmar 265 chirp transducer. So real nice stuff there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the back of the boat. He's got a bottom cloud extension here. Brings out past the bottom of the boat, gives the boat more buoyancy, more lift when we're sitting there trailing seas. There's pros and cons to it. You don't need it in every situation. He doesn't necessarily need it here, but there's added benefit to it. Staying up on step at a lower speed, a little better cruising efficiency. So that's uh, kind of the tail end of the boat here. We could jump inside and see what we have in there. Well, here we are inside the cabin of the 32. You can see it's massive. Uh, what he wanted was a very large aisleway, and that's what he got. I mean, we're that big for an aisleway. We still have our standard three foot wide dinette here that a couple people can sit at facing forward or facing back at the table, front and rear. We have the Woldridge flip flop backrest, so for additional passengers behind, the front passenger suspension seat. We can face forward. Of course, you know our dinette. The backrest folds down in the front. There's a gas shock. This table drops down and I have a big cushion that goes on here. This turns into a seven and a half foot bed. So we have a huge bed there, not counting the one up inside of the cuddy. Lots of storage in the boat, as with all of our boats. Of course, under both the big boxes of the dinette, under the bottom of the dinette, in the floor, there's multiple storage hatches. You can see quite a few of those there. Huge countertop. I'll give you another view of this in a second. But we have a Wallace Nordic DT cooktop, diesel or kerosene. Um, there's also an oven in this boat, a Wallace oven. You got a sink. There's a large uh, freshwater tank in the boat. 
We have lots of cabinets, there's a huge fridge, I'll show you that. The uh, camera is sitting on top of a large locker. So we've got indirect or under lighting right here for lighting up the countertop. There's LED lighting all throughout the boat. Nice big head area. Customer supplied this special toilet, which he liked. It's really nice, has electric pump in and flush out. Nice. <laughs> Got grab handles on either side welded. You may be or not be able to see them. The grab handle up on the roof. There's curtains all the way around for privacy. The microwave here. Of course, this boat has shore power and an inverter system. There's a, a Magnum uh, charger slash inverter in the boat. So there's four six volt AGM Full River golf cart type batteries for the house system. There's two interstate group 31 AGM batteries for the starting so quite a battery system we can look at that later as well but anyways that's how we're able to do a microwave and some other components in conjunction with the shore power so here I am sitting at the helm uh, 32 customer uh, specially requested these Bostrom wide ride compressor seats so they're actually quite comfy and all sorts of controls <laughs> actual compressor in there to build up pressure um, for the different size person or how rough the water is you can let air out um, nice plush soft leather and we've got all sorts of garment equipment and goodies on this boat um, this one's outfitted with a couple of Garmin 8212s at the front screen he's got uh, an 8215 at the rear screen so these are both 12 inch dual processor units up here at the front there's a 15 inch all touch screen at the back He's got the Garmin GHP20 autopilot system for the main engines, controls, front, and at the back. Garmin VHF 200, all NEMA 2000 compatible VHF. He's got a remote for it here. There's the controls for the Magnum Energy MS2000, which is the charger and inverter on this boat. There's a go lights up on the roof, LED spotlights controlled right here from the helm. Steering wheel, obviously, all hydraulic steering, of course. Um, he's got Wiper, intermittent wiper switch for the driver's window. There's another switch that controls the other two. You can set that up however you want, really. Um, trim tabs, Lenco trim tabs, all blue C switch panels for everything else. Again, cool garments. You can set up all sorts of stuff right now. I'm displaying engine data and speed and RPMs and fuel flow, oil pressure, anything you really want to see there, I can see on the Garmin screen or on the command link um, Yamaha gauges if I wanted to. All fly-by-wire controls here on the side, Garmin reader better view of the countertop here the Wallace cooktop the Wallace oven all its controls there's a floor duct here for the Wabasto AT 3900 furnace that's in this boat that is actually mounted down behind that panel you can't see it but there's ducts up on the front for defrost duct underneath to go into the cuddy duct down here for going into the floor get a better view of the sink underneath the cabinet there's our Magnum MS 2000 We've got our Garmin GSD26 with the transom mount Airmar 265 chirp transducer. So really nice depth sounding and fish finding capabilities on this boat. With in addition, he has a Garmin GCV10, uh, which gives a side scanning ability. So there's two transducers on the back, actually three. There's an additional one for the future cannon downriggers he's going to put on. So he can follow the contours of the bottom of the body of water. Um, Big fridge. This is one of the larger Norcold fridges that we put inside of this boat. Real nice. AC, DC, of course. Large locker he has in the back. Keep some toys in there, if you know what I mean. Got the microwave and a little extra storage area. Shelves above on both sides. Get another nice, convenient place to put a bunch of equipment. He's got plugs front and rear, as you can see, part of the shore power system. There's also a plug over on the other side underneath the dinette for, for doing anything with a laptop or anything else sitting on top of the table. Um, we'll take a look at that with a better view. Um, one more thing up here at the front helm, or a couple things. He's got a welded grab handle, which is a, just, again, just a, a unique thing that he wants specifically. Easy to do. That's the controls for the Wabasto furnace. And he's got the remote for the VHF. There's one of the ducks, a nice little backlit compass. He wanted a wall here. Um, you don't, we don't do that standard. Um, normally it's all wide open, but that's what he wanted. Totally fine. So lots of room there. Again, access to storage underneath the floorboards. 
the main one down there, a couple hatches under the floor, lots of storage, lots of ways to get to it. So grab handles on the ceiling in the specific locations that he wanted. So. All right, well here I am up in the cuddy. Um, the cushions to continue the bed are just sitting off here to the side so you can kind of see a few steps that we have to get up and out of the gullwing door. Opens up with nice gas shocks, so getting in and out is nice and easy if we need to get out and deal with the, the rope or the chain or if you had a bow pulpit on the boat, this one does not. If you did with our ladder, you could go right out, pull up to a beach, get on and off really nice. You can see the next duct there for the Wabasto, so if we're sleeping we can have one aimed at us. Again, nice windows all the way around the bolt, boat, nice bolted in windows. They are locking, sliding, screened windows, diamond sea glaze, nice stuff. Um, lots of storage underneath all, all these cushions, underneath the floorboard the camera's sitting on. Underneath all these, there's plenty of storage. As far as the bed goes, get it all put back together like so. And again, you've seen me do this before, but I'm 6'2", and uh, that's where I bottom out. So I got tons of extra room for another person there, let alone the big bed up on top. And if we did not have this wall, which you can or cannot, it's completely up to you, I could do a bed extension another two feet further out so you can make a really big bed. Well, here's just a view of uh, the passenger seat, which again, you got lots of room front and back for people sitting behind them. And this one, they want a glove box, nice little place to store purse, cell phone, plunder. There's a cup holder over here, grab bar for holding on to things. There's fans on each side of this boat, speakers up above. Lots of storage down below, side trays down below, side trays up above. Again, nice big screened opening sliding locking windows, so it makes it real nice if we need a breeze coming through the boat. So that's your little view of the uh, passenger side. Another little look at our view at the uh, dinette again, just so you can again get a visual of room, because I know that's hard to do without being here in the boat. So uh, this boat is extremely roomy. The other view you get here is the customer had us put in a TV in the back here. Um, it has a DVD player or Blu-ray player in it so you can use a disc right inside or with HDMI cable connects up to the Garmin so if we're going to get satellite or anything else that we want to run through the Garmin system you can connect it right into the TV so that that is actually pretty cool. Another set of big windows here in the back so uh, maybe we should go take another look at the head. Another little view of the fanciest room on board why it is the head, of course. Um, nice toilet here. This guy has an electric pump for bringing water in and flushing it down to the holding tank. So it works nice and well for those big jobs. Um, there's a key here, which you can keep up at the front helm. This is so nobody can pump sewage overboard when we are sitting on the trailer or in a marina. <laughs> Turn that guy, runs the macerator, and out goes the sewage. Uh, the floor in this particular boat, it's got an aluminum floor with rolled on non-skid, a drain in the floor. This guy might use some sun showers in this for a shower, which is just fine. A um, couple welded grab bars on either side, you may not see them, helping us get up and off. And there's a big bar up above on the roof. So that's the head, lots of room, curtains inside, LED lights, really nice setup. All right, well, here's a little look at the back fishing cockpit. Tons of room in this boat. It is a self-bailing boat. Welded aluminum floors. We've got a roll-on non-skid covering all the floors. A couple huge fish boxes underneath the floor. Rubber gaskets, nice big box. This has whale diaphragm bait box pumps down on each side. So we have a switch at the rear helm. We can pump everything overboard. Of course, our boats, as you've seen before, full length locking rod lockers run all the way up past the cabin wall your long rods you don't have to break them down we've got a guttered gasketed lip here so when we shut things it seals nice and tight when we're hosing things down rods aren't getting soaked with salt water if we're using raw water wash down you might wonder what that was he's got a control for his tr1 autopilot for the kicker um, that's where he chose to have it there's a little antenna here he has a wireless remote also for that tr1 autopilot Additional little tray here. There's a tie bar for the kicker engine. He's got plugs here. 
for his future cannon downriggers which are going on this boat. Control for the TR1. It's got a very large uh, Electrodyne crab and shrimp pot puller uh, connections here. This guy is used back here. He also has a storage slot for it up at the front. What you can also see here uh, next to the pot puller is obviously the walkthrough transom door. The door swings, locks shut. Got a nice big cutting board lid here. Well, he, di he divided it up. We have a divider here. He's got a huge sink on both sides. This side he has his wash down hose in and the spigot so he can fill that up with water, keep some crab fresh, do whatever he wants to do there. Um, got a nice backsplash which drains over the back. Three big uh, doors in the transom here. This basically gets us to our bilge, our pumps, our fuel water separators, batteries, all that type of stuff. Battery switches, different blue sea electrical components. This boat's got a serious uh, battery system, as I may have mentioned. There's four uh, six volt full river AGM golf cart deep cycle batteries here, all linked together for the house battery system. There's a couple Group 31 AGM batteries over here for the starting battery. Well, here we are at the rear helm, as you can see. Again, huge area, nice diamond sea glaze locking door, nice hardware. Got some LED floodlights up above for nighttime. Got our wash down switches, our switches for the pumps underneath in the fish boxes. Nice big uh, Garmin 8215 touch screen, dual processor screen here at the back. Wow, really nice. Um, got our GHP20 autopilot controls here. Uh, we also have Yamaha command link gauges at the back as well as the front. All fly by wire controls for the rear engine, the main engines, and for the kicker here. He's got control here for a winch down underneath, which is going to control a roof crane for a future dinghy he's going to put up there. Got storage in here. There's a little shelf. Other components we can get to. A Charles isolation transformer for the short power system. Uh, the pump for the main Garmin. So autopilot that is. So uh, there's the rear. Little shelf. Again, locking rod locker doors both sides. Rods go all the way up. That's the lowdown.